Fox News' Sean Hannity had Geraldo on to break down Bernie Sanders' uh, victory speech last night after winning in West Virginia. And as is apparently becoming more and more common on cable news, they forgot that their mics were on while the video was rolling. Let's watch. All right, hold those polls for one second. We're just going to dip in real quick and watch the socialist Bernie Sanders just step up to the microphone. There he is, you know, to each according to his need, from each according to his ability. Spread the wealth. Tax people at 98%. That's pretty much the message of Bernie so Sanders. annoying. This guy is so annoying. Your, your mic is hot. <laughs> what are you but saying? He is, he's so annoying. And, and people, who, <laughs> people who think that his support is go to Donald Trump are smoking dope. <laughs> God, they suck. <laughs> okay. So I don't know why people think this is controversial. Wouldn't he just say that on air anyway? Yeah, yeah, I actually don't. I don't think he necessarily even thought his mic was off. Well, because the thing is, like, Sean Hannity was speaking. Right. Sean Hannity presumably knew that the mic was live, unless he just realized it. All that stuff that Sean Hannity was saying, which was, by the way, far more inflammatory and ridiculous and demonstrably untrue than what Geraldo was saying, he said that. Like, you, look, you can debate whether Bernie Sanders is annoying, Okay, you can't debate whether he would tax people at 98%. It's simply untrue. Yeah, so what weird rules they have in cable news. Like, you're allowed <laughs> to lie about the guy to no end. He gives, like, the communist credo there. The communist. To, for a socialist, those are not the same things, right? I mean, a social no. democrat. Right, and so the whole point of Fox News is to trick you and to lie to you and to get you to believe in right-wing propaganda. But wait, Geraldo! Don't say annoying. Your your mic is hot. That's personal. Like what? So what? Yeah. Right. And of course we don't agree with him. And uh, uh, there's a lot we don't agree with on Geraldo. But I don't care that he thinks uh, that Bernie's annoying. I think he's yeah, annoying. Yeah, I don't care at all. So uh, what? We we got something for you in a second that you're probably going to care a little bit more. Uh, but as much as I didn't like what Sean Handy said there, I do want to give them credit because while saying that. While Bernie Sanders' speech was playing, they did something uh, no other mainstream media outlet would do, which is play parts of his speech. Yes. <laughs> which, for some reason, it doesn't matter if Bernie wins or loses. They're showing that empty podium of, uh, of Donald Trump and uh, Hillary Clinton. Yes. I think last night they actually showed a Ted Cruz empty podium. When we do live coverage on TYTnetwork.com slash live, which we do every election night, every debate, uh, and... We'll go to the Bernie Sanders speeches. We'll go to as many of the speeches as we can because we want to have you guys uh, hear them out. Uh, and then we'll always be amused at, at CNN. We have monitors in the studio. Uh, they'll be like, here's Bernie Sanders. Never mind. Empty Trump podium. Let's stay on that for 20 minutes. Podium watch. Right. 2016. I mean, and, you know, I was on uh, another channel today at, and there was a conservative on and we were, I don't know, debating kind of. Uh, and... Like they're like, oh Trump, it's they the all they they cover him because he gets such good ratings. But wait a minute, online we know, and it's not just us. Others have written articles about how Bernie Sanders does even better than Trump. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I don't know that that's exactly the same for TV, but obviously there's a ton of people super interested in Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Yet he never gets the coverage anyway. Yeah. So it's not just about the ratings. Yeah. And plus, like TV should learn that with the audience they have, and we we talk about the demographics of like the mainstream cable news audience. Like, you want to bring on a young face. Bernie Sanders far younger than their average viewer. Like, put the young <laughs> ones out, and that'll excite the old folks watching at home. There is anyway, some truth that's to a that. roundabout way to say that their audience is very old. It's very old. Um, but while we didn't necessarily think that Geraldo was wrong to say that he thinks Bernie Sanders is annoying, that's them being slightly more like a YouTube channel, which is actually a good thing uh, from our point of view because they're usually so fake. Sean Hannity trying to get Geraldo to be fake there. What Geraldo went on to say a little bit later on, not about Bernie Sanders, but about the African-American vote, is uh, possibly a little bit more offensive. Mitt Romney got 27% of the Hispanic vote and lost, he got trounced. If Donald Trump doesn't do 40% of the Hispanic vote, he likely will lose big disagree. time also. Disagree. And disagree. his hope, I think, is black men. If, if Donald Trump can go to black men and say, Trump is keeping out your competition for jobs with the immigration stuff, and also Trump is Hillary, rich, you Hillary. can be, you, if he can get the hip hop vote, if he can get that number from 10% to 15, 18% in a state like I'll, Ohio, I'll who he's getting, makes though. a difference. Uh, yeah, the yeah, hip hop yeah. vote. How did they say that was a straight face? No wonder their audience is he, that old. He's always talking about the pants and stuff like that. 
Like, he has a very conservative view of black America from 1990. And he has not changed one bit since then. He's unbelievable. So, uh, Bill O'Reilly's audience is an example. Is uh, on the, their median age is 72 years old, right? So, um, I met a Fox News viewer the other day. He's 37. In order to balance him out, there is a 107 year old <laughs> watching Fox <laughs> News Channel, watching Bill O'Reilly. Okay, yeah. so and Fox News overall is 68. The reason I'm saying it in this context is because I believe Geraldo's over 70. Like he mm. looks younger. He's a he really does look younger. yeah. He, he looks, looks like really he's fit, like and he's 40, in good 50. shape. Remember, he took out in trouble for taking that selfie with his shirt off and stuff like that. Nice abs. Okay, God bless your heart. That there were on your side, right? But don't let that appearance trick you. He's just as old as Fox's audience. Yeah. So he's like, ah, oh, what's these hip hop kids doing on my lawn? <laughs> I think maybe Donald Trump should hit, get the hip hoppers. <laughs> <laughs> You just appear to rally with Run DMC, and I think that you can win this thing. Yeah, and if he can get Grandmaster Flash on his side, <laughs> uh, he's got this election all wrapped up. Yeah. And you know, if there's one way to appeal to African American voters, it, it is to patronize them by calling them hip hoppers. Hip hoppers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jr., are you more likely to vote for Donald Trump, you hip hopper? I was. I was wondering. <laughs> Actually, I was. Uh, I've been so against him until. Uh, he decided to put a hoodie on, you know, wear some chucks and shit. But um, the, 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 I, I was annoyed by this all day. I saw it early this morning. And I was trying to decipher what the fuck is a hip hop vote, right? Because he didn't, you know, I think it feel like he changed it from, there's a difference between the hip hop vote and the black vote. Because he brought up, oh, you know, brings up his money. And by the way, black folks are not competing, maybe at least in Southern California, they're not competing with immigrants from, uh, from say, South America, Central America, Mexico. When they're not competing with them for the jobs. That was the first part of his thing. I don't know what he's talking about. And then number two, the hip hop vote. Talk about your money. So you think young black guys are gonna go out and vote and be like, yep, Donald Trump's gonna get me because people still say bling bling. That was 1996 that shit was out. <laughs> so nobody says that anymore. No one goes out, it's not gonna prompt a vote from anyone. I think that's what he meant. Like, I've got money. You can have money too and buy your Bentleys and get your bitches. That's what he thinks. He really thinks that's a valid <laughs> full thought process that voters have. That's that's how much that that's the degree of, of co mental capacity they think a certain block of voters have. So it's let, amazing. Let me, let me address the first point that JR made because I think some people might be thinking, no, I mean, look, with the undocumented immigrants, there isn't their competition for jobs and stuff. No, no, Geraldo again, like the Fox News guys, thinks from old school, like, well, it's either going to be the black guy that mows my lawn or the the Mexican uh, illegal alien, right? Mm -hmm. And so, or the that are going to do the farming. Who's on the farm? The black people or the Mexicans, right? And so that's why he says something like they're in competition for the jobs. Now, you can make a general point that undocumented immigrants are cluttering the job market, and that's a legitimate discussion to have, right? Mm -hmm. But to say simply that they're taking black people's jobs and that, there's another layer of assumptions there, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, that goes into it. And then, yes, like since they don't know any actual black people other than Juan Williams, okay, they think like, okay, what would appeal to black people? Oh, if you had the bling, right? Oh, and Trump has it. Don't worry, black people, come vote for us. Yeah. No. And gee, I wonder why you don't get the black vote. I certainly do not speak for African Americans, but I know that they're going to see through that sort of pandering. You have to be authentic. Carry on hot sauce everywhere you go, and you'll snag them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I did want to talk about actual numbers here because they, this is Geraldo's theory about how uh, Trump needs to do both with Hispanic Americans and African Americans. And uh, I got some bad news for Donald Trump. Uh, the research firm Latino Decisions recently found Trump's net favorability among Latinos to be negative 78%. For comparison, Ted Cruz's net favorability was negative 16%. So it's not that they just hate all Republicans. They especially hate the guy who coincidentally called them all rapists and murderers. Uh, and then for African Americans, a late March public policy polling survey found 13% black support for a generic Republican presidential nominee versus 86% for the Democrat. But Trump managed to get just 3% favorability among black voters. <laughs> ah, it turns out that the hip hoppers are not into Trump after all.